Hi there everyone, I just wanted to share with you some of the features of this new radial grid shape that I've created. Uh, there's a couple of articles up on the Visio Guy website about it. And it's one of those things that's just a lot easier to understand when you can see it in action, plus it's kind of fun to use. So the main purpose of this shape is just to help you arrange things in a circular, circular grid. And uh, while it's just for really visually arranging things, there are some secret features that make it actually a little bit more automatic than you might suspect. So when you download this thing from the website, you'll, you'll just have these two pages, V2 instructions and V1 instructions. And the, it's actually kind of out of order. The V1 instructions really show you what this shape is all about if you want to read all about it. And V2 shows you some of the improvements made to the shape in the second version. But we'll just skip all that and actually just show you live how to use this thing. So some other things to notice is that you'll need the document stencil. If you don't see that, you can always get more shapes. Show document stencil. This is the shape we're looking for right here, radial grid shape V2. If you, it turns out that you really like the shape, go ahead and right click on it and you go add to my shapes and you can add it to your, your favorite stencil or something like that. It's really easy, just right click on the shape and put it in your favorite stencil. And once you have that, you can always open up your favorites, wherever they are, it's my shapes favorites, here they are, and you can have that thing ready to go with any Visio drawing you happen to be working on. So let's go over and see what's going on. So the general problem I see is that, you know, Visio has, it has some layout uh, features if you go over to the, uh, I believe it's the design, the design tab, there's some layout, stuff like this, but this is really for connected drawings. It doesn't really apply to shapes that aren't connected. You can see that it's previewing this stuff and it's trying to arrange things, but it doesn't really understand the structure because we're just putting these things on here for illustrative purposes, these uh, various server shapes, and they're not connected, so Visio doesn't understand what to do with them. And that's often a case you might run into. So what I've come up with is this configurable grid shape. Let's zoom in a little bit. And instead of fiddling with shape data fields or doing lots of right clicking, all you have to do is pull on these sliders here. Let's make it a little bit darker so you can see what's going on here. Let's make it some crazy blue color and we'll make the line width a little bit thicker like that. So instead of having to fill out fields or something. You just I just have drawn these these slider controls down here and you can see you can add more lines, fewer lines. You can actually add more rings if you want to have more rings like that. You can control the inside and outside radius and of course you can make the shape bigger and smaller. And just having that it makes it easy to visually place things on here. So if we've got five shapes we could move this down to f five sectors and we'll just go down to rings like that and it would be easy enough to just center shapes like that. You get the idea and use your eyeball and doing just that, just working like that, it, you're going to be closer to a circle, especially if you have lots of shapes, than if you were to try to just eyeball that without a guide like that. So that's the primary purpose of the shape is to, to have the guide. So let's talk about some of the individual features. I'm going to move these guys out of the way so we can focus just on the grid itself. Now that you understand roughly what it's for, first thing is we have the number of sectors, and that can go from 0 up to 50. So depending on how you want to arrange this, you may be using the space or you may be using the lines. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Just do whatever you want. But there's a little readout here like this. And then you can have more rings like that. We've already shown that. And we can pull on the control handle in here to set the inner radius. So we can do that. There's some status, status icons here that sh say NP means this is non-printing, and if we right-click on it, you can see there's some more options. We can show show and hide all these different things, radio lines, rings. We can show these scales at the bottom, the text, and this starting angle. And we can also make the thing non-printing. Normally, you want the thing to be non-printing. Uh, you're you're going to ha probably have it configured to be very light, like it comes out of the, the stencil. It's 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 a little bit hard to see. That's on purpose because you don't really want to focus on it. You might not want to delete this till the very end of your project, but you know, leave it around 
uh, just in case you want to add some items to it or whatever. But uh, you know, generally, you don't want to focus on the grid itself unless you're you've got some other creative idea. I mean, just because I said this is to help you arrange thing shapes in a circle doesn't mean you have to use it for that. You could probably do all sorts of things with this shape. So uh, another thing I didn't talk about is the there's a starting angle here, and you can change that, and you can change the direction that the uh, that the lines grow and this will come be a little bit more important when I talk about the connection points later and to that subject let's get the connection point tool and we're gonna have to go light again because you can't see them since Microsoft has made connection points really difficult to see there is one row or one ring of connection points here and they correspond with those sector lines again up to 50 and they position themselves automatically. So if you can figure out how to glue things to this, you do get a little bit of automatic uh, positioning and alignment like that. It's not just purely an eyeball tool. So, and again, we've talked about the rings are from zero to five of those, and the status shows here. So, just one more time, you've got all the status here. It's just abbreviations, non-printing, clockwise, if we right click and turn it to counterclockwise, it says CCW, the starting angle is shown, and things like that. So you can double check what's going on with the shape just by looking at the text here. And you can manually manipulate the features of the shape by pulling on these handles, starting angle, internal radius, and then you can turn things off with by right clicking. You can even hide, hide the whole thing. Now, one thing about hiding the whole thing is Where's the shape? What happened to the shape? Well, this little, it's called an action tag, used to be called a smart tag. This will show up if you turn everything off, and you can unturn everything off. But it shows there also on mouse over anyway. So if you don't like to right click, I love right clicking. I'm used to right clicking. I do everything with right clicking. If you don't like that, maybe you're using a touch screen, you can just click on the shape and you should be able to get these options. It's all the same options that you'd get. Uh, right clicking uh, it's it's kind of a uh, a nice neat presentation maybe it's maybe right clicking is just should go away because this is i like the, the way this works too anyway so what else can we do i've talked about these connection points you might be thinking oh maybe we can glue things to these to the radial grid and you'd be right so i've brought these web service um, web server shapes over and by default, they do have a connection point in the middle. But the idea behind this connection point is to glue to connectors. And by default, they won't stick to the connection points on the grid. So this shape is still a default shape. And if I get to connection point tool, you can see there's a point here on the FTP server shape, and there's a point on the grid. And if I drag them over, nothing really happens. And that's because you have to change connection points into a special type. And the easiest way to do that is, again, get this connection point tool up here, right-click on an existing connection point, and make sure it's outward or inward and outward. So these should really be called female, male, and male and female, meaning the, the female accepts and the, the male kind of tries to attach. So pick outward or inward and outward, and you should be able to glue the entire shape to another shape to a connection point. You can see here that as I move over it, that little green square shows up. I'm going to switch back to the pointer tool here. And sure enough, that server shape moves around with it. So we can do that with all of these. And off we go. It's a little bit hard to do. and. Right away, I think to myself, hmm, I only have five sheep, but I have eight sectors, so let's move this down to five. Okay, and that FTP went to the middle because that point was not, not no longer needed. Let's get the rest of these glued on there as fast as we can. Where's that point? I think this guy has a point. Okay. There we go. Almost there. And let's prove that this thing. So I'm going to prove that everything's glued. So I'm going to move the ring, the radial grid, everything moves. Let's give it a little bit more space, like that. OK. And maybe we want the, you know, want the bottom to be 
uh, more of the focus, not the top, so we can change the starting angle. So now, let's say, you know, your boss comes and says, well, we need six more server shapes on here. What are we going to do? Well, we can add more sectors, and you can see that as more sectors show up, <coughs> these shapes contract towards the start. So that's the importance of starting clockwise or counterclockwise, is as you add points, which way do you want them to grow? So we can right click, or let's just use the action tag and say it's not clockwise. Now they go the other way. And as I add sectors, oh, it's actually going the other way, but yeah. Oh yeah, as, as we add sectors, they squish up this way. And you can see as we remove sectors, they spread themselves out in the counterclockwise direction. And you can see here it's counterclockwise here. Also, if you have, you can turn all this stuff off if you don't, once you get good at the shape, you don't need to see the text, maybe you don't need to see the, the uh, scales just to clear things up. You can always hover the mouse over the shape and get a, a readout. Yes, we have six sectors and two rings, blah, 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 blah. Okay, one thing to know about the connection points, they're always going to be in the second most outmost ring, so it, it's it's helpful to have two ring. I'm sorry, two rings, not one. It's a little bit funny when you have one ring. It's nice to have two rings, and the connection points will be right in the middle. If you have more rings, then the connection points are just on the second of the outermost ring, so not really very useful. But I wanted to give people more rings in case they wanted to maybe stagger things around a circle or something like that. So let's turn back our text <laughs> and our scales, just because it's easier to look at stuff like this. And we'll return to five and there you can see we've got uh, a nice distribution of shapes in a circle. Now talk about non-printing right here. Non-printing it won't show if we export to a, a uh, image or to PDF. I, I believe it still shows up in full screen mode. I can check it really quick. I'm not sure what's going to happen on the video. So you might see some of that. So it shows in full screen mode. Not a big deal. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, I, that's on by default, so you don't accidentally print out this grid. It's not going to look very good. So yeah, that's the shape. Uh, that's the radial grid shape. Uh, download it. Insert yourself a, a new page. Just hit the plus button. Pull out a shape and play with it. It's kind of fun just to play with it and add extra rows and change change all the parameters. Uh, there's a shape, the multi-browser shape is built right and this has the connection point. It's all set up so you can actually practice gluing things to it. So let's uh, control drag a few instances of this. If you right click this shape you can change the, the browser icon to one of five different ones so it's kind of fun to so just glue those on there. And then change the number of sectors so it spreads out Looks like we got that on the wrong place. So when I when when the when the connection points go away, they fly to the center. You can see there as chrome it must be on number three and it jumps to the second. Now they're all in the middle. And as we go about, they come back out and start arranging themselves around in the circle. So that's good fun to play with. And again, it, it's just so much easier to watch this in a video than to read about it, how to use the shape. It's uh, it's kind of dynamic. It's really neat to visually configure the shape. And I hope it's not only useful for you, but you kind of have some fun using it. So thanks for watching.